So uh, you've been producing since 2005. How, how would you, um, you know, tasting through some of the wines, pretty well structured, not a lot of tannin, not, not a lot of, vis you know, harsh tannins. So are you more focused on kind of drinking in the short term? Is that, uh, or don't you think about it that way? You just want to produce a wine that, that you like now and or how would you describe that? That's a fucking scam. Trying to educate the world on that. Not, not enough people listen. When the French over extracted tannins, they just weren't very good winemakers. Bad climate, you know, Bordeaux probably should have never been making wine, you know? I mean, with, with, you know, in good years, yeah, but let's face it, when you got to pick fucking September 1st because hailstorms and other things, California, we don't have that problem. Right. Now we do smoke, but um, those wines were green and herbaceous or over tannic because they didn't understand winemaking. And the British press, my guess is 100 years ago, latched onto these tannins and said, oh, these, they need 20 years. That's because they over extracted their tannins, didn't have enough color to bind to that tannin enough at the sign because they picked too early whether it was they were going off to war or they didn't understand it. They probably struggled the later they picked getting it to go dry. They didn't have modern winemaking, you know, cultured yeast and stuff. So everything was native and maybe wasn't powerful enough to finish the wines. They probably knew that shit, if we pick in end of September, October, you okay, baby. <laughs> yeah, passerby. <laughs> unload the luggage from Bonnerock. Uh, and so it's just, that's a bullshit scam. A great wine is drinkable immediately and has the ability to age for 30 years. Then you get subjective, right? Then you say, well, like my 19s, they're ripe. They're not, they're just not oxidated. Uh, they're going to live for fucking ever. And it's like, I drank them this weekend at a party and I'm like, whoa, fuck, that's just too much right now. That's subjective, right? Right. Uh, wanting an older wine or secondary flavors. Most people don't. Very few people do it. Usually it's males. Uh, most people like right young wines. Mine, the 19s, are, I think, going to be as good as we've made, but they're not close. And that, but those are subjective things. You should still always be able to pick up a wine and that wine should still be able to be seamless, whether it's with more ripeness or balance, whatever it is, that wine should still bring you pleasure, come in your mouth, seamlessly float across your mid palate because you've done your homework and extracted the proper amount of talent, tannins to match up to the, the color that you have. Otherwise, you just got tannins floating around and that's when you get that, wow, this, yeah. A lot of structure. This thing needs to age. A lot of structure. It's too much. The winemaker screwed up. Yeah. And we now can, we really can pinpoint that from an olfactory standpoint. You really want to be in this range of like 20 to 25% bound uh, enzymes to tannins. And then we know our senses are, they're going to pick it up and it's going to be a seamless glass of wine. Soft, easy start to finish. You get into 14% like some of those old Bordeaux and it's fucking gritty and just, you know, too, they, they pulled out too much tannin and that didn't have the color to support. So that's why I try to tell people, you know, yeah, you're, when you buy Booker, you know it's going to be ready to go. Yeah. 